heard that nothing exists until it is observed. When that which is observed is the processes by which you are conscious, it is always a transforming moment. This is the essence of all schools of meditation to observe the processes by which we become conscious. But the process is very slow. 21 to 40 years of Zen are required to reach the level of mastery. How can we speed this up? Hacking consciousness is the topic of my talk. And I use neurofeedback, brainwave biofeedback. I studied with the man who discovered this was a possibility, Joe Camilla. In his laboratory in 1968, as a graduate student, I had a liberating experience by using his technology to observe the processes of my own consciousness. And all I wanted to do after that was to help other people to get that same high state of awareness. But I discovered, as I did research in universities, that people have emotional traumas that are like a glass ceiling that prevent them from ascending into higher awareness. And so I've spent my entire life developing a technology and a method to help people to attain oneness, to connect, reconnect with source, to discover who they truly are. Now, along the way, I've discovered a lot of practical benefits. For example, in hacking consciousness, it says here that we have a 50% increase in creativity. This is true. I worked with Stanford Research Institute scientists, taught them how to increase their alpha, and on average, their creativity increased 50%. There are other things that people, biohackers, are interested in achieving, and they include things like greater intelligence. Well, I did a study of IQ. I found that one summer, I, everyone who trained, I gave IQ tests to before and after the seven-day BioCyber Node Alpha 1 training. The average increase in IQ was almost 12 points. And it didn't matter if it was a 10-year-old grandson or a 65-year-old grandfather. The average increase in IQ from one week of this biohacking is 11.7 points. Well, it turns out, however, that IQ explains only about 20% of success in life. EQ, or emotional intelligence, explains 60 to 70%. Here is a book by uh, it's, uh, Dr. Travis Bradbury. He describes the process of emotional intelligence increasing. Each of these books, which cost $14, comes with a passcode where you can take the EQ test online and we do it before and after our seven-day training. Enormous increases in EQ are seen from the BioCybernaut Alpha One training. There's two dimensions, your awareness of your own internal emotions and your awareness of other people's emotions. And if you have mastery in these areas, you will have a much better life. You'll be more successful. 60 to 70% of success in life is explained by EQ. So we have IQ going up, we have EQ going up, we have creativity going up, an average of 50%. And these are, in fact, side effects of doing the deep inner work. Now, some of that deep inner work is related to Zen. Now, I've been to India several times to study brainwaves on the yogis. And I've also worked with Zen meditators and Zen masters. This study is. Uh, 1966, it's by Kasematsu and Harai. They studied Zen meditation in Japan. They went to Zendos, talked to the Zen masters in both main branches of Zen, Soto and Rinzai, requested permission to measure brainwaves of the monks while they were sitting in meditation. They also asked the Zen masters to rate the monks for level of spiritual development. This they did. And they found when they measured the brainwaves that there were distinct and reliable changes in the brain waves as people went from beginner to intermediate to advanced Zen. In beginning Zen, alpha increased at the back of the head. In intermediate Zen, alpha increased at the back of the head and spread forward on the head. 
And in advanced Zen, mind you, no one was rated advanced who had less than 21 years of practice, and some had 40 years. In advanced Zen, Alpha starts increasing the back of the head, goes forward on the head, and then it slows in frequency, so the Alpha waves went a little slower, and there were also Theta waves that emerged only in the masters, only in the advanced, from the frontal locations. So now I'm doing research, and uh, here is a study that I did. You can see it was done in 1993. Alpha EEG, closer parallel to Zen than yoga. And what I found was the seven-day biosabernaut alpha training produced exactly the same changes in the brain waves as were seen in advanced Zen, 21 to 40 years. Here's a graph that shows that. Perhaps I can uh, illustrate. We have increases at the back of the head in alpha. The purple is the broadband alpha. Then the alpha in spreads forward on the head, just like it does in beginning and intermediate zen. This is beginning zen, this is intermediate zen. But then in the advanced zen, there was a slowing of the alpha, that's the yellow, and the most distinct feature of advanced zen was the increases in frontal theta. So here we have the two head sites. This is back of the head to the front. Here we have delta, theta, alpha, beta. And so we see from seven-day biosabernod alpha training, increases in blue is fast theta and green is slow theta. So 21 to 40 years of Zen in seven days. Technology speeds things up. We know technology speeds things up. And so here we have a technology for hacking consciousness. I've also studied Zen in other ways. For example, here we have a beginner Zen. We have left and right occipital at the back of the head, left and right temporal, and left and right frontal. These are power. Each line represents 60 seconds of recording. And so this is a beginner Zen, 10 years of practice, almost no alpha, a little bit right here. When he starts to meditate, his alpha goes away. It's called trying. Here we have a middle Zen, intermediate. This is a woman. Now, she starts with her eyes open and eyes closed base, and she starts meditating. The alpha goes away, but it gradually comes in on both of the occipital sides. There's a little bit at the temporals. Now, what we have here is the coherence between these sides, the coherence between these sides, coherence from here to here, and that's the coherence from here to here. But there's nothing going on at the front of the head. If we look at advanced Zen, here we see it, this is advanced Zen. Big alpha increases, spreading to slower frequencies, lots of coherence, and you can even see at the frontal sites in the deepest part of the meditation, some coherence. You can see coherence between the frontal and the back of the head also, literally getting your head together. Now, here we have a Zen master, a Roshi, and what we see is something extremely rare. We see coherence in alpha and theta. I call it a bimodal coherence. This was seen in only one other of the 30 meditators I studied, and that was this guy. You can see a little bit of it there, alpha coherence and theta coherence. Now, I didn't know what this was about. I ran this study in 1971. In 1978, the Zen master died, and he gave transmission to, guess who, this guy who seven years earlier had showed a little bit of this bimodal coherence. I now understand that this is the physiological basis of a halo, and I've actually done a scientific presentation on that. So what we can see is that technology can speed things up because this is producible in seven days with the appropriate neurofeedback training. And so what we can see is that we have a technology for accelerating the development of consciousness. And if we look to another tradition, here we can see the EEG of Kundalini. I believe I made the first report of what the EEG of Kundalini looks like. It's an immensely powerful energy that comes up the spine, and here we had a huge delta burst. These are the frontals, these are the temporals, these are the centrals, and you can see kundalini energy symbolized by this snake coming up the spine. 
And so we know the technology speeds things up. Here we have a technology for accelerating the development of consciousness. And so we have the ability to hack consciousness. There are, of course, many benefits, increases in creativity, increases in IQ, all these things. But the core of the work has to do with raising consciousness. And when we do the work internally, we transform. And so that's the name of the game, to become more conscious. Ramdas said, the only activity with any intrinsic and absolute worth is that of becoming more conscious. And so as we go forward, we can see the Biosavernaut Institute here with a double rainbow. We're located in Sedona, Arizona, in Bavaria, Germany, and in British Columbia, Canada soon elsewhere in the world. And what we do is a biohacking process in which people look within, they discover how to heal their ancient traumas, it's a forgiveness process, and there's brainwave feedback. And out of this, people transform in amazing and powerful ways. It's a wonderful form of biohacking. And in terms of the work that people do, it is transformative. Yes, IQ goes up, anxiety and paranoia and all those depression go away. But the essence of it is to become more conscious. There is a technology for becoming more conscious. And we do this work presently in three countries, maybe soon beyond. And so I offer to you the opportunity to use technology to become more conscious. Ramdas said the only activity with any intrinsic and absolute worth is that of becoming more conscious. And so I thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to talking with each of you later.